Hello everybody, my name is Zero and this is Pro Tip. Apparently I wanted to show you guys uh the how to use a uh, pen tool but my recording decided to crash on me, stupid camcoder Fantasia Camtasia. God damn it, it after I recorded of two hours of this crap Oh well not technically crap but anyway I managed to record this one but the recording decided to fail on me, so balls to that! God damn it! <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna go through uh in terms of uh how to use uh this paint to side, uh, which is one. But anyway, if you guys want uh want to know how to use it on how to use how to draw in um paint uh what not paint to side I mean like. Uh, for the shop CS5. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll do a video in that. Hopefully, that is. <laughs> but besides that, I'm gonna start talking about how to draw in paint to side. So basically, the most basic stuff you need to know is the pen, which is the what, the one that you use to sketch. Hold on, let me just turn off all this crap here. Just show you guys the basic of uh drawing so this is the basic thing so what you need to do is just grab in a particular art that you draw which is this one this is the, my basic sketch you can sketch it in your scanner kind of wing like sketch it in real life and scan it in and drag it in just go file import oh no uh, basically you don't need a file import just drag it in drop it here and there you go that's it so okay so once you sketch it out Go to click this one, click the layer that is sketched. So, for example, this is called a sketched. Okay, sketched BG. Okay, so, so once you sketch it in, the colors will be something similar to this. So, the colors will be something similar to this. You want to tone it down to around 30 or 25 to 30, uh, either one works. So, once you turn it down, you have something like this. So what you need to do is to create a layer. Go here. There's a new line work art. Click that one. It will create a new line work art. So this one, I already create this one. Oh, I don't do that. So I already create this one, which is this all the way top here. So what you need to do is that line art must be on the top if you're trying to draw something similar to mine. If you're trying to draw something like blending art, which I'm probably going to explain later, you don't need line art too, uh, line art work. So line art work will be on the top. So basically line art work will be something similar to this. So in terms of manipulating with uh, line art work, is that C. If I hit control, the button control, you can see all those uh, dots around here. So all those dots around here, you can form by clicking it and dragging it. So you can do like this. You can drag whatever you want, whatever shape you want by doing the whole uh, slowly thing. So basically, that's the most uh, basic of uh, <laughs> dragging the line tool around. And if you hit alternate, it will delete the part that you don't want. So, for example, you feel like this part doesn't is not nice. So you just delete it, then add another part in, drag it in, just like that. So, that's the most basic stuff. And you, one thing bad about using line two is that whenever you establish a line like this, and you want to move it to the right hand side a bit, you can't really move the thing unless you move the whole thing. You see, you only can move uh, the whole thing. Well, technically the points but you can't move the the base point you can move the sub point but you can't move the base point so that's a bad thing about it. so be sure to establish where you want to draw first before you start doing the line too and if you're trying to use mouse well mouse to draw hold on let me just get black one mouse to draw so the best way to draw is uh, using this one try to play around with the settings here with a pen all this other stuff I didn't really use much, the color one I didn't use very really much or so. So this is what you normally do if you're using mouse. Be sure to use the small, smallest brush if you're using mouse to in order to create something similar to this. But one thing bad about using mouse is that you can't create it. This is the one that you use a mouse and this is one that you use with a tablet. So the difference is between both is that you can't create something similar to this, which is a sharp edge, which all of us wanted in our artwork. So 
one fall, flaw thing about using mouse is that you can't create a perfect kind of a shabby kind of thing. Instead, you have a more uh, agey kind of look. So I don't know about you, I don't really like the agey look. So <laughs> that's the reason why I get a tablet as well. So that's the basic of uh, drawing this one. Then after that, we'll go to the color part. So color, as you guys can see here, coloring, the best way for uh, well, an amateur kind of uh, tip I can give is this. You have to, the best way to do everything, uh, all those color is to separate the layers. So you must create a new layer by clicking this button here, the new layer button, and drag it below the line artwork. So the colors will be below the line artwork. If you treat above the line artwork, it will overlap the color, uh, overlap the line, and it turns out like this. So you, we don't want that one to happen. So we drag all the way down. So below the line art. A normal occasion, well, if you're be if you're trying to begin uh, doing art, it's best to separate all the colors in one separate layer, uh, in couple separate layer. But I did it all in one layer because I like it somewhat. And you also can do, uh, if you want, you also can click this flying out of the way and start doing a blending art kind of uh, art, which I'm not going to touch in this particular video. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's a couple of uh, reasons why I do it. First one, which is you can either do it in a blending art form, or it's just much more easier to do stuff for me, at least. <laughs> so best thing, to keep in mind guys is to separate all the colors so you can edit it easily that way and try to keep the most base layer on the bottom of uh, of the color and the most uh, particular details on the top so you have a much more layer kind of a feeling okay so you got this one background as well so okay so I did background, so this is all the color. So the background is all the way back. If you turn this one off, you get the background color as well. And this one on. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about something about the brushes as well. So the most basic one is the pen tool. The pen tool here, guys, there is a lot of different brushes which you can explore around. I'm not gonna touch on that. And set up the stuff. So the most basic thing is the third one. Uh, I'm, I'm using pen to the sketch. So if you are using, uh, if you want sketch that is, if you have a tablet and you want sketch that is. So this is the most basic one. And in terms of coloring, this is what you need to do. So coloring, if you're trying to color with a pen, uh, pen, uh, tablet plan, pen plan, <laughs> tablet pen, you can always do an outline, for example, like, uh, like, let me go do something similar like this or color outline like this. Then after that, you just use bucket to fill it in. That's the most basic what I normally do. And uh, if you're using mouse, that is a bit difficult because uh, comparing with um, comparing with Photoshop, this one doesn't have a line to kind of way which you which enables you to easily color it. So it will be a bit difficult for you guys that use uh, use mouse. Unless you want to go over here and color in. Uh, you, nope, you can't do that. <laughs> Unless you want to do this, go over here. Click, uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, go here and click this one, which is merge down layer. Once you merge down, it becomes a, hold on, uh, nope, it doesn't work that way. Oh well, my bad. So, so anyway, unless you have uh, you export to PSD, you export to PSD, save it as uh, PSD, then after you drag back in, all this will be layer, normal layer, and after that you merge it all down. Then that way you can color by using the the uh, bucket to it, that way. So it would be much more easier for you to actually color if you guys to uh, wish to do that one. So. In terms of brushes, now, now I'm going to talk the brush, about the brush. Alright, so the most basic brush I always use is uh, this one. Uh, the shape here, you can play around with it, it's up to you. Here all those uh, extra stuff which I don't normally use. Here there is a lot of different brushes. So bristle, you have a... Uh, hold on, let me just go here. Have a more refined edge. 
or so it seems. So this is the what I normally use to color. So there is a couple of settings here, which is the blending, the delusion, and the persistent. So the blending one, you can always set around, play around with it. But I normally set it to zero because I want to try to do color it uh, in a more easier way, kind of way. So I normally set to zero and after that I color it up because I don't want uh, it, the colors to be mashing around. So what you, I'm going to explain what you can do with the blending tool by doing this. Hold on, let me just get some very distinguished color. So you have a black color here like that. Oh, I don't want that one. I want a simple color. Then after that, you have a brown or golden color, something similar like that. So what the ma the blending tool is that it adds towards like this. So you can always, whoop, I don't want to do that. You can always play around with the uh, blending tool kind of way. So it matches up together kind of, kind of thing. <laughs> so you can always play around with it. It's up to you what you want to do with it. So that's the basic of a uh, uh, brush tool. There's a couple more which I don't re gonna act I'm not gonna explain it because I rarely use those brushes. So yeah. <laughs> so the second one would be the water brush, which is the one that I normally use in terms of coloring the shading part. So let's go to the shadow part. So the shadow part I split into two because I wanted to do it in a more nice fashionly way, which is like this. So you can establish the highlight part. So what the water tool is that the water tool has a much more of a water brush that is has a much more feathery kind of look. So it has like this this kind of a light and feathery kind of look. I didn't really mess around with the blending, delusion, and persistent. You guys can always mess mess around with it. Depends on what kind of a uh, details you want you create. So that you can play around with it. And in terms of the darking area, always I always start with a dark kind of color. So you can color like this, then after that you can just drag it all up, to mash it up. So you can always do this like this, one dark color. Now that you just mash it up by drawing like this. This is how I normally do it. And if you are using mouse, then I have no idea how to explain that to you because I'm using tablet to do this one. If you're using mouse, the best way to compensate this kind of a technique is to use block shading kind of technique, which you guys can go Google. I'm not going to explain that one. So this is what I learned from uh, through my experience and stuff. So you always color the black one at the side and you mash it up up the front. And after that, you use a light color, for example. I normally use white color as a light color to shade the highlights, or not, sh to do the highlights, <laughs> that is, <laughs> to do the highlights. But I managed to learn something new, is that you don't always need to use white color to shade. You always use the bright color of that color. So for example, the the base color is, uh, hold on, this, hold on. Uh, this color is the base color. God damn it. Okay, uh, this color is the base color, so you need to use something light color as a form of uh, shading. So you always do like this, to shade up the color and stuff. Make sure the color that you're going to color and the shading part is two different layers in order to get this kind of effect. If not, it will mash up the whole freaking thing and it will look ridiculously ugly. <laughs> no shit about that. So that's pretty much uh, what I use for the water color to create a shading part, which you can do a lot more by creating something, some effect, things like this, and the background effect kind of way. So there, there are a lot of things you can do with uh, this particular software, but in particular, that's pretty much what I know <laughs> in terms of doing. And after that, the sim all these different things you can always try to explain, uh, always try to experiment with it. But the basic stuff I always use is the pen tool, the brush tool to color up, pen tool to sketch, airbrush, sometimes I use it to color, but I don't really know what it does in particular. <laughs> so I stopped using that. And the watercolor to create a feathery kind of a shading look. And after that, you always remember, if you're trying to do an art kind of a, the most simplest thing, control to manipulate the dots 
and stuff, alternate to delete it, shift to move it, which I don't really use it because you can't move the, well, you can move the base point, but it will destroy the whole kind of a uh, feeling thing. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I thought about it. And then after that, I think that's pretty much it. Hold on, let me try to check a look and see. Uh, yep, that's pretty much it. So all you need to do is just save as, then after that, just save as what uh what you want it as, and like that, and all these crap stuff. Uh, I don't really use it. There's a lot of features and stuff you can saturate, hue, what crap you want, but I don't really normally normally use it. I only use it in Photoshop. So. I think that's pretty much cover all the stuff I need to say. So, <laughs> in terms of you guys, if you guys want to see Photoshop, uh, me doing this in Photoshop, let me know, and I'll go do it to show you guys how I do it in Photoshop, which is quite different, because I don't normally use it in Photoshop, so the techniques and stuff will be very, very, very different and stuff. So, oh yeah, in terms of the tablet I use, I'm using the Wacom tablet, which I will show you guys right about here. Go Google Wacom Intunuos Intunuos 4. Okay, image. There you go. So I'm using this tablet. This tablet, one thing good about this tablet is that this tablet has a very well, it has a lot of different functions as well. It has a uh, like auto in a rule of kind of thing, which instead of using clicking here like this, you can use it with uh with the with the drawing tablet. But in this software, it doesn't really support the special features, so I didn't use it much. And comparing this with other kind of uh, Intuos tablet, this one is very 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 good in 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 terms of the sensitivity and stuff. So be sure. It, because I did try a couple of different of uh, tablets. I did try bamboo tablet. I did try graphical something. I forgot what's it called. But yeah, I tried a lot of different things, and I I like this one a lot compared to different stuff. Oop, oh something I just missed out. Hold on, hold on, boy. Okay, I just missed out some coloring. <laughs> I didn't know this that. Some uh basic of uh what's it called highlighting. Okay, just go here like I said, do like this. Now that all you need to do, go bigger brush and just mash it up like that. Okay, go mash it up like that. Yeah. Then after that, if doesn't if doesn't work. Go black one, go black, then color it up again, color it up, just to mash it up, then after that, go delete the outside part, like this, there you go, there you go, so you got a much more of a refined edge kind of thing. So, I think that concludes what I need to say in terms of pro tip, <laughs> with zero, in terms of paint to side, that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to wrap this up by saying if you like anything else or you have questions about stuff, just leave it in comments and I'll attend to that as soon as possible. Besides that, I think that's pretty much it. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, see you guys next time. My name is Zero and bye bye.